In such cases, we prefer to deliver repeated radio frequency applications of short duration instead of a single radio frequency application of a duration greater than one minute to avoid the risk of cardiac perforation. With the manual standard catheters, cardiac perforation may rarely occur and atriesophageal fistula occurred in just one patient out of more than 10,000 undergoing standard CPVA in this center. We believe that with the soft magnetic catheter the risk of cardiac perforation is nil even in less experienced hands. This is a delicate point of the procedure and it is difficult to obtain complete potential abatements which requires radio frequency applications longer than 15 seconds. The operator is now completing the circumferential lesions around the left pulmonary veins. And the line is being joined to the line of the mitral isthmus. The operator is now performing a linear lesion between the left superior pulmonary vein and the left inferior pulmonary vein. This is done in order to reduce the substrate in this region when possible, as in this case. However, sometimes this is not possible because of the anatomical variability of the pulmonary vein insertion. There are variants such as a common ostium or addition pulmonary veins. The ridge between the left atrial appendage and the left superior pulmonary vein is a challenging site and if narrow, its ablation may result in residual gaps. On the bottom left panel, you can see impedance monitored in the green box, temperature of the tip of the catheter in the red box, and the time The operator is now starting to perform the circling lesions around the right inferior pulmonary vein shown in violet. The right superior pulmonary vein is shown in blue. With the stereotaxis remote system, even the septal region considered to be challenging, the circumferential lesions can be easily and quickly performed, as you can see thanks to the great stability and excellent adherence of the soft magnetic catheter to the atrial endocardium. As you know, right-sided pulmonary veins are considered to be a very challenging region with the manually deflectable catheter. This often forces the operator to use an aggressive approach regarding the power settings, the temperature settings and catheter movements especially with the pulmonary vein isolation strategy where the attempt to obtain the isolation at all costs may result in several complications or in residual gaps. Therefore, in this region the catheter stability and wall contact is indeed crucial. In our experience, like the left superior pulmonary vein, the septal region is richly innervated. Therefore, in this region, there is a need also for autonomic substrate elimination. Even in the absence of the elicitation of vagal reflexes, we demonstrated that the CPVA induces a vagal denervation, which represents probably 
one of the most important mechanisms of the efficacy of this procedure. The operator is now completing the circumferential line around the right pulmonary veins. As you can see, the right superior pulmonary veins has been taken off the screen in order to allow a better view of that region. Over time, our approach has slightly evolved and additional lines from the mitral valve annulus to the left inferior pulmonary vein and two posterior lines connecting the two encircled areas. In addition, a more proximal placement of encircling lesion sets, more ablation energy applications at sites eliciting a vagal response and more extensive ablation within the encircling sets are performed. At first, the CPVA strategy focused on encircling each pulmonary vein osteum by circumferential radiofrequency lesions performed at 5 mm from the ostea. To achieve better results, particularly in patients with persistent atrial fibrillation and associated heart disease, we enlarge the encircled area of the periosteal tissue up to 20 mm, expanding circumferential lines around the pulmonary veins and isolating them two at a time, as you can see from this large circumferential lesion set. The operator is performing a posterior lesion connecting the two encircling lines. This is done in order to prevent macro reentrant postablation atrial tachycardia, like the mitral isthmus line performed at the beginning of the procedure. The additional lines in the posterior wall and in the mitral isthmus prevent possible postablation macroentrant tachycardia and increase the substrate modification area by involving not only the pulmonary vein area but the posterior wall as well. Ablation lines are performed by sequential navigation to contiguous points with short applications in sequence to achieve a more than 90% reduction in the bipolar electrogram amplitude and or peak-to-peak -peak bipolar electrogram amplitude lower than 0.1 millivolts inside the line. Even here, like with the left-sided pulmonary veins, when possible, the operator performs a line separating the right superior pulmonary vein and the right inferior pulmonary vein. During the radio frequency application in this area, we continuously monitor the impedance values shown in the bottom left panel in the green box. This is done to avoid the delivery of radio frequency energy near to the pulmonary vein ostia. The radio frequency applications are of short duration and are associated with the complete abatement of atrial electrograms. The lesions are linear and continuous due to the catheter stability as shown on the floor image on the top left panel. The view of the atrium is constantly rotated in order to give a better view to the operator. The lesion separating the right superior pulmonary vein and right inferior pulmonary vein is now complete. When the lesion set is complete, the operator checks all the ablated areas for the completeness of the lesions and can eventually add further radiofrequency applications to terminate the procedure.